When our children were small, Keith and I had a table in our home that we called the writing center. And we stocked the writing center with markers, crayons, recycled paper, glue sticks, scissors, and we experimented briefly one time with glitter. Now our kids could sit at the writing center for hours and draw pictures. And whenever they showed me a picture, I was uh, careful not to say, oh, what a nice looking giraffe or elephant or whatever, because my child might reply, that's not a giraffe, mommy, that's you. <laughs> I would always try to remember to say, what a nice picture. Will you tell me about it, please? That's the proper response because with small children, who knows what they've drawn, what they have, the image that they have in their heads, and what comes out on paper might not match up very well. And you would never want to imply that they have drawn a faulty picture. In our gospel reading today, we have a case of faulty picturing. There was a faulty image in the heads of the two followers of Jesus who were walking on the road between Jerusalem and the town of Emmaus. The risen Jesus met them on the road, but for some reason they did not recognize him. Despite the fantastic stories they had heard of a resurrection, the two companions actually believed that Jesus was dead. The stranger they met asked them what they had been talking about, and they sadly told him that about how the mighty prophet Jesus of Nazareth had been condemned to death and crucified. And then they said, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Now, can you hear their disappointment and their dashed hopes and dreams in that statement? They had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, the anointed one, the mighty king whom the prophets had foretold, the one whose kingdom would be established forever. But if Jesus was dead, he could not be the Messiah that they had envisioned. Crucifixion and death were not what people expected of the Messiah. That was just not how the two friends pictured things. If the two men had sat down at a writing center and drawn a picture of a Messiah, they probably would have sketched a king wearing a crown and sitting on a throne, or perhaps a mighty warrior fighting a battle against the Romans. They had pictured a new Israel ruled by Jesus of Nazareth. Truth be told, they probably had imagined themselves striding by Jesus' side triumphantly right up to the palace and the golden throne. That was their picture of a Messiah, but it was a faulty picture because humans don't see like God sees. So Jesus came and drew a new picture for them. He reinterpreted the scriptures, showing the two men that the promised Messiah would not be their idea of an earthly king. Instead, he would suffer, be killed, and rise from the dead to enter into his glory. In the new picture that Jesus drew for them, his followers would walk beside their living Lord, but not in the way that they had envisioned. There would be no swords, no battle glory, no palace, no golden throne. It would be a different walk of humility and faith and love that gives itself away. Now their hopes had been shattered, but Jesus gave them a new hope rooted in the picture that God was drawing. Like those on the road to Emmaus, our expectations and the pictures that we draw for ourselves 
can be faulty. We cannot always perceive God working through the events in our lives, particularly the traumatic events, and we cannot see the big picture that God sees. Life happens, and our hopes, expectations, and the pictures that we draw for ourselves can be shattered. Are you familiar with the way that life can wreck your expectation and shred your pretty pictures? We perhaps envision ourselves being married to the same person for a lifetime. We see ourselves having healthy children who grow up to be responsible, happy adults. We expect to be healthy. Now, realistically, we really should not expect this, but we do anyway. We seldom anticipate the devastating diagnosis that comes out of the blue. We envision ourselves being employed until we are ready to retire. But life has a way of tearing up our pretty pictures. One of our most faulty pictures is that life will continue indefinitely the way that it is. It doesn't, as we know very well. A new and sometimes unpleasant normal invades our lives. When the mental pictures that we have drawn for ourselves are torn to shreds by circumstances or tragedy, it can create a void a hole in our lives, and shock, disappointment, rush so easily into that void as they did for the two men on the road to Emmaus. Shock and disappointment rush in, or worse, despair and hopelessness. But then, suddenly, Jesus is right there walking beside us. Although we may not recognize him or welcome him, at first. Jesus draws a new picture for us, but it is not the same picture. And sometimes we have trouble accepting this. The picture that Christ draws for us is of a new reality, and it is filled with God's hope, and it calls us out of our disappointment and despair. What were the old pictures that you drew for yourself, your expectations of life that got shredded? And what was the new picture that Christ drew for you? In these strange times, we might, uh, what might be the new picture that Christ is drawing for us as individuals and as the church? Will we recognize Jesus as he is walking alongside of us, and will we welcome him? Will we embrace the new picture that he draws for us? I can't help but remind you that in our story, the eyes of the disciples were open to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread otherwise known as communion. And maybe there's something in that, but that's a sermon for another time. May our eyes be opened to the presence of Jesus Christ, who walks alongside us right now, right now, in every day of our lives. And may our hearts burn with the fire of the Holy Spirit. May we share the good news. The Lord has risen and we have seen him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.